Hello there. And in this video, we're going to discuss probably one of the most commonly discussed or argued about problems in mathematics, and that is the question, what is zero divided by zero? Another common and equivalent question is that of what is zero to the power of zero? Uh, these two are not exactly the same exact expression, but they are definitely going to be uh, related in somehow. But before we pretty much dive into the discussion of this video, let me first state what the correct and I guess you could say accepted answer uh, is across the mathematical community. And that is both of these expressions are undefined. That is zero divided by zero and zero to the power of zero are both undefined expressions. So we may ask, okay, well, since it's undefined, can I define it to be equal to something? No, why not define zero divided by zero to be equal to zero? Why not define it to be equal to one? Why not define it to be equal to pi or something like that? Uh, that's what pretty, we're pretty much gonna discuss in this video. All right, so let us first consider uh, the following uh, functions at least. So consider the function f of x is equal to zero divided by x. So if we plug in a bunch of values for x here, what are we going to get? So we're gonna get zero divided by like five, that's gonna be zero. Zero divided by one, that's gonna be zero. Uh, zero divided by uh, negative five, that's gonna be zero. Zero divided by negative two, that's gonna be zero. And zero divided by really, 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 really small numbers is also going to be equal to zero. Uh, so in the calculus realm, at least, we usually express this kind of idea via limits. So that means we can usually say that the limit as x approaches zero of the function f of x is going to be equal to zero. Now we can easily prove this if you have some calculus background and you know what L'Hopital's rule says. So L'Hopital's rule says that the limit as x approaches zero of this expression, uh, we can take the derivative of the top and bottom expression and we get that this is going to give us 0 divided by 1, and that's going to give us 0. So why not define it to be 0? Because at least from this function, uh, that seems to be a reasonable thought. Uh, but we're going to approach this from a different angle as well. So let us now consider the function g of x to be equal to x over x. So if we consider this function and plug in a bunch of values for x, so we're going to get like three divided by three, two divided by two, uh, negative three over negative three, negative one over negative one. And we can also consider really, really small numbers. And all of these is also going to be equal to one. So we see that as X gets really close to zero of this function, all the values are getting close to one. And you can approach it via the calculus proof via the Hopital's rule if you want. But you can pretty much see that, you know, both of these functions are approaching zero divided by zero, but they're approaching different values for which it could be. And that's a little bit of a problem. All right, so let's pretty much, you know, uh, formally state that. So both functions here, f and g, are approaching... what zero divided by zero should be equal to. And since we're trying to define zero divided by zero to be a fixed number, so that everyone you know will accept it and use it in all their rules, uh, then we should be able to fix it to one of them. Uh, but both f and g approach different values. So that means, you know, uh, zero divided by x is getting close to zero, x divided by x is getting close to one. Uh, therefore, if we want to define zero divided by zero, which one do we choose? Do we choose zero or do we choose one? Well, technically you can make this, you know, you can look at other functions and pretty much, you know, get a similar result. Uh, so if we assume, so if we assume, uh, zero divided by zero is equal to one. Is it okay? 
Well, okay, if we multiply both sides of this equation by zero, that's gonna give us that zero is equal to one times zero. And that's equal to zero, so that's okay. Uh, what if we assume that zero divided by zero is equal to zero? What if we assume that? Again, if we multiply both sides of this equation by zero, we get zero is equal to zero times zero, which is zero. That's okay too. So both are fair. So if both are fair, then you know, you know, why can't we choose one of these? Well, here's another thing. Uh, suppose we assume that zero divided by zero is equal to pi. Now, you know, this may not be obvious why you would even want to do this because you know I haven't created a function that converges to pi. Uh, but if we assume this to be true, that's that's going to be z zero is equal to pi times zero, and that's equal to zero. That's also okay. So here's three different values for which you can define zero divided by zero to be, but they're all different. Uh, and neither of them give us problems. All right, so since, since there is no unique value that zero divided by zero uh, favors more, than another and what do we mean by favors more than well definitely zero or one are the more favorable uh, values for which zero divided by zero could be um, pi may be a least favorable value uh, then we cannot define zero divided by zero to be a fixed number now I know that some calculators do say that zero divided by zero is one or zero divided by zero is zero, uh, but that's just taken based on convention of whatever rules is usually taught in a classroom or whatever audience it you know behaves well to. Uh, but both of these answers are perfectly uh, valid. So therefore, zero divided by zero must be undefined because there is no value for which favors one more than the other. Whereas, you know, other expressions, for example, you know, the square root of four, that's gonna be equal to two, and you know, five times two, that's gonna be equal to 10. All these answers, you know, exist and are fixed, and they do not give contradictions uh, to one another. Uh, but if, you know, if you say like, you know, five is equal to three, well that's going to be false and you can't say that is true because that's going to give a lot of contradictions and so on. Uh, but you know defining zero divided by zero to be something uh, does not really give us any uh, leeway in terms of uh, advantages. So it's best to pretty much leave zero divided by zero to be undefined uh, unless you have a real reason for doing so. Another common uh, expression that a lot of people see is, for example, defining zero divided by zero to be infinity. Uh, that would maybe be another uh, value for which you uh, consider it to be. So consider the function uh, x divided by zero, for example. So uh, x divided by zero, that's going to show, so if we plug in a bunch of values here, uh, so that's going to be 5 divided by 0, 4 divided by 0, 3 divided by 0, 2 divided by 0, 1 divided by 0, and so on. Uh, all these values are going to be what? So if we pretty much look at the value or look at the function, uh, let's look at the function, uh, say 1 over x, for example, or we can vary this top. So if a is a positive number, as a gets close to 0, all of these numbers is getting really close to positive infinity. Okay, well that's cool I guess, so that means we can define all these numbers to positive infinity. But remember, uh, positive infinity is not a number, it is a concept. Um, but if you want to sort of argue uh, that it is a number, you know, feel free. Uh, but there's a set of numbers called the hyperreal numbers that extend this. Um, but okay, if we approach that as positive infinity, then we shouldn't get any contradictions. But if you approach it from the left-hand side, for example, negative 3 over 0, negative 2 over 0, negative 1 over 0, whatever these numbers are, they should be equal to the same exact thing, but they get close to negative infinity as well. 
So therefore, if you want to sort of add to the list of what zero divided by zero could be, well, zero divided by zero could be equal to positive infinity, maybe, or zero divided by zero could be equal to minus infinity, possibly. Uh, so in that case, now we have, uh, you know, a couple other uh, candidates for what zero divided by zero could be defined to be. But as we've already discussed, zero divided by zero cannot be defined to be equal to a unique value. So in conclusion, uh, I hope you at least see why uh, we must say that zero divided by zero is undefined. Uh, because when we do try to define it, we get some contradictions and we also get some clashes between other perspectives and other functions and other uh, applications uh, that would pretty much you know, pose conflicting ideas and roles to the realm of mathematics.